friend of God, as we are having our seats, one thing I have come to realize, and this is something the devil does to young people, it's that the devil knows, the Bible says, that faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. And then Isaiah 55 continues and says that this, that are as far, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your, your ways. That's what God tells us. And it continues to say that this word shall not return to me void, but it has to accomplish everything that it has been sent to do. The Bible says this word shall not return to me. The word of God has to return to God, but it, has, it will not return void. How will the word of God not return void? When you speak the word of God back to him, when you put God in remembrance of his word. So the next time the devil tries to attack us, the devil will try to attack us based on the word of God. The devil will come and tell you, you have been in this situation for years. You're here praying to God. He is not coming through for you. You're here crying to God to heal you. You have been having this disease over and over again. And if you do not know the word of God, you will not be able to defeat the devil. But the next time the devil comes at you and tells you you have been in this situation for too long god is not coming through for you remind the devil and speak to the devil not words today we have been taught by red minor most people speak words but not the words when you speak words it's more of you are complaining it's more of you are murmuring it's more of you asking like oh my god why are you not coming through why are you not doing this why is this not happening but when you speak the word when you speak the word you are speaking what god has written in the scripture so when the devil tells you that you have been in this situation for too long you cannot be able to quit that addiction remind the devil of the word and tell them my god delivered me yesterday. Guess what? He is the same today, tomorrow, and forevermore. So I might be in this situation now, but the word says that it might tarry, but it shall surely come to pass. He delivered me yesterday. So today, guess what? He is able, he is more than able to deliver me out of my situation. Speak the word of God back to him. Speak the word of God back to him. You have to learn to speak the word of God back to him. But it does not just come out of the blue. You have to have a relationship with the word of God. You must connect with the word of God. You must continue with the word of God. In Psalms 119, this is my favorite, my favorite scripture in the whole Bible. And the psalmist says that how sweet is your word. It tastes like honey to my mouth. Honey is considered the sweetest thing that there is. But the word of God, how sweet is your word to my mouth. Sweeter than honey. Sweeter than honey. You will come here and try to defeat the, the, the devil by telling him, you know what? I believe in God and when I believe in God I go to church and all those things guess what the devil also believes go in God the devil believes there is a God you have to go a higher in, you have to go into a higher level to fight the devil you must go to a higher level to fight the, the voice of the devil apart from believing God you have to continue in the word because it's through the word that you will be able to speak it and through the word of God you are able to conquer when the devil came to tempt Jesus Jesus did not use inspirational quotes I know I'm coming for people Jesus did not use inspirational quotes and affirming that, you know what, devil, I today, I affirm I am more than enough. No, 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 no. Jesus did not quench the fiery death of the devil by saying, you standing and telling him, you know what, I, through the years, I have learned that even if you come and tell, no, 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 no. Jesus quenched the fiery death, death of the devil by the words. He spoke the word of God. 
Now that word was returning to God, but it was full. Why? Because you're speaking it. Because in your tongue lies the power of life and death. When you speak the word back to God, you're speaking life. When you speak the word of God back to him and be like, you know what, God, I have been serving for too long. I have been serving for too long. But your word says, the Lord, you are a rewarder of those who serve you diligently, of those who seek you diligently. That's me, Lord. That's me. The word of God is going back to him full. He has no other option but to answer what you have spoken back to him. You know, I have always been wondering why Elijah, why in the, in, um, the book of Kings, Elijah went to Ahab and told him that it's not going to rain for three and a half years, but by my word. That's, that's some audacity right there. That's, that's, you're going to speak to a king. You're just a mere prophet who in the next like after you speak that you're going to be running away because the wife of the king is going to be chasing you and the audacity with that capital K as Rev Joshua says eh? and K stands for Kiburi at that particular point you go to the king and tell him you know what I'm not even coming here to plead I'm not even coming to with fear and whatever no I'm coming with that boldness that is different that I am saying that it's not going to rain in Israel for three and a half years but by my word meaning that I only as Elijah have the power to cause it to rain in Israel but until I say so it's not going to rain we always say that it's not over until God says it's over now Elijah went to Ahab and told him that it's not going to rain until I say so and I asked myself what kind of power is this that Elijah could be able to say with his mouth that but by my word it's not going to rain but by my word and I came to the realization that Elijah spoke what God spoke but that comes out of a relationship that comes out of a relationship with God and it's not today I read the word of God I pray for one minute and so and then after a week I'll come back to read the no 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 it's a continuous consistent intentional continuous in the word of God that we get to the place where we are speaking the words of God that our words have so much power it's like God speaking through us that we can get to a place and say, but my words. Paul got to that place that Paul, we say the gospel of Jesus. Paul owned the gospel until he called, but my gospel. We say the gospel of Jesus Christ. But Paul got to a place until he owned the gospel. He said, my gospel. That comes from a relationship. That comes from a place that you have connected with God. An intentional, continuous continuation in the word of God. It comes out of relationship. And as young people, I want us to understand. We have been in the series of foundational doctrines and back to basics. We always ask ourselves, how did this... Um, the bishops of our times, Bishop Margaret, Bishop Mark Karaoke, and all the bishops, how did they get to this place that they are in? How are they able to walk in such an anointing? We even go further to look about the revivalists. We go and look at the pictures of old Smith Wigglesworth and the like, Catherine Kuhlman and the like, and we ask ourselves, how did they get back to, how did they get to where they got to? How did they get that much power? It comes from a relationship with God. It comes from continuous fellowship with the word of God. It, you, it, it's not a today and then I leave you God for a while and then I'll come back the next day. It doesn't work like that. It's a continuous, it's a continuous, it's a continuous work. It's a continuous work. And today I want us to talk about prayer and testifying. 
I want us to talk about prayer and testifying. And as you are talking about prayer and testifying, I want us to think about, I just, right now for just one second, I want you to think about what you are enjoying now. When did you pray for it? What right now you're enjoying? When did you pray about it? When did you pray for it? And how did you pray for it? For how long did you pray for it? For how long did you pray for it? Right now, there are some benefits. There are some things that we are enjoying as youth, as a people, as an individual. There are some things we are enjoying. But when did we pray about it? When did we intercede? Where did we invoke the hand of God? It didn't just come like that. You, you just didn't find yourself in the situation that you're in. You had to toil in prayer. You had to persist in prayer. I know what I'm enjoying right now. I had to pray about it. I had to speak to God about it for a while. And it was not yesterday. It was not last month. It was a while ago what I am enjoying now. And I want us to go to, to First Chronicles. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Hannah, could you please pass me um, the Bible, please? In the back. First Chronicles chapter 12. First Chronicles chapter 12. In verse... First Chronicles chapter 1 and verse 32. Thank you. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. And as you're there, also open Second Kings, Second Kings chapter 19. As you're there, open 2 Kings chapter 19. Rev. Joshua, I, I, I'm enjoying that. It's, it's, it's glorious. I now understand what Rev. Brian usually says. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. 2 Kings chapter 20. Uh, but sorry, chapter 19. Sorry, chapter 19. Chapter 19. And I want us to go to verse 14. Verse 14, I'm reading from the New King James, verse 14, and it says, And Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. If you're those people to underline in your, in your Bible, kindly underline that and spread it before the Lord. Then Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord, of, o Lord God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim, you are God. You alone of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. And hear the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to reproach the living God. Truly, Lord, the king of Assyria, have laid waste the nations and the lands and have cast their gods into fire. For they were not gods, but the work of men's hand, wood and stone. Therefore they destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, I pray, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are the Lord God, you alone. I want us to underline that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are the Lord God, you alone. And verse 20 says, Then Isaiah the son of Amos sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Because you have prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have had. I want you to underline, I have had. And as we are, we, we are thinking about what we are enjoying now, when did we pray about it? I want you also to think about the times that you have been in a situation or you have been in a place where it's a, it's a problem and you're thinking of a solution. What happened next? 
did you pray about it or did you just think about it? Let me explain in this way. There are some times, let's say for example, I'm looking for school fees and I really want school fees to go to school. And I am just here, I'm thinking that, guy, I want school fees. I don't know when your school fees is a talker, but I want school fees. But I think I have this uncle. I think I have this aunt. Or maybe I can do a mchango. But aki, guy, mungu, natuwa wapi school fees? Huh. Watu aniendelek fikiria, I'll know where I've gotten the school fees. And then, you come and tell someone that um, I, am, I, I want to go to school and I want school fees. And the person asks you, so what have you been doing about it? I have been praying about it. Have you been praying about it or have you been imagining about it? Have you been praying about it or have you been imagining about it? Hezekiah got the letter from this king and this king was talking um, ill about God and this king wanted to attack Israel. So Hezekiah got the letter from one of his men and immediately Hezekiah got the letter. He did not start to worry or think about the letter or what the letter has said or what can be done about it. Immediately he got the letter. He said, you know what, let me go before the Lord and he put the letter there. And he told God what he wanted. That is praying to God. Praying is involving God. God will never act in your life if you do not involve him. God will never act in your life if you do not invoke the power of his hand. Most of the time we imagine our problems we think about our problems we think about a solution and maybe one or two times call the name of God but in real sense we are calling the name of God in vain because sometimes we use it as a way akushtuka like kai nitatoa wapi pesa kai jehova do kana do ikare i need money lord lord and then at the end you say i have prayed thus you have imagined Praying you involve the hand of God. Hezekiah was in a place, was in a desperate place. And he knew if he doesn't do this, the king would attack. Hezekiah had the option of rallying his men and telling them, you know what, let's think how can we go and attack these people? How can we retaliate against them? But he said, no, I can't do that. I can't go with my own strength. I can't do things out of my own will. I need God. And he went before God and he invoked God. And he told God, apart from exalting God, he told God to incline his ear. He told God to listen to his prayer. And immediately he got a response. And God said, I have heard you. God will never respond to your thoughts. God responds to your prayers. God never responds to you thinking about your problems or thinking about your solution. God responds to the prayers that you pray. God responds to what you call him to act on. Let's go to a story that's more relatable. Hannah, not this Hannah, she's just called the same, but we're talking about Hannah, the mother of Samuel. Hannah, you should name your child Samuel. You should. But Hannah prayed to God. Hannah, sorry, Hannah was desperate. He, she needed a child because Penina had so many children and Penina every single time was out here to get her and I was like, oh, we hunam toto, so I am better than you. We we ata wezi ito a mama. Mimi ni saitu a mama so and so. And Hannah was always downcasted. She was not eating. She was always sad and all those things until Elikana asked asked her, why are you not eating? Why are you like this? And Hannah said is the reason. And Elikana asked, he asked her, am I enough for you? But all this time that Hannah is sulking, is mourning, is thinking, oh, where am I going to get children? God is not responding. Because Hannah is thinking and imagining about her problems. Hannah is not invoking the power of God. Until Hannah got tired and rose up and went to the temple and prayed. 
that's when God answered the prayers. God answers prayers and not thoughts. You have to involve God in your life. If you do not involve God in your life, God is taking a back seat. That's how much, you know, people usually ask, oh, how do we have free will in this world? How, because God knows if you are going to live or die and all those things. Right there, that's free will. If you, you can choose to involve God or not involve God in your life. If you don't, he will take a back seat and watch you now do because you, in, at that particular time, you're telling God that I am qualified to solve my problems. I am qualified to solve my issues. I can get my own solution. And in the long run, you may get solution because you're here thinking of school fees. You're thinking of uncle so-and-so, auntie so-and-so. And if you ask auntie so-and-so and uncle so-and-so, by that time, they will have money and they'll give you money and you will pay your school fees. And you'll be like, oh God, I have gotten school fees. It was auntie so-and-so who gave me school fees. It was uncle so-and-so who gave me school fees. But in that particular moment, you will never acknowledge God because you did not involve God. You will never acknowledge the hand of God in a situation where God was not involved. You have to involve God. And as we are talking about Hezekiah, I want us to go to chapter 20. Chapter 20. And that's the scripture where it says, it starts by saying, In those days Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, son of Amos, went to him and says, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. In layman's language, Isaiah was telling him, I hope, Rav, you have a will, because it doesn't look nice. You're about to die. You're about to die. Get your house in order. But instead of Hezekiah not panicking, Hezekiah went back to God. Now you have to understand, if it's not a routine, if it's not something you're used to, if it's not a lifestyle for you to involve God in every situation that you're going through, you will not involve God in every situation. Hezekiah was used that in every situation, he, he involves the hand of God. He involves God. So even to a point where he has been told by the prophet, you are about to die. He did not start panicking because he remembered the previous time I involved God, the other time I involved God, the other, other time I involved God, and he came through for me. What makes it seem difficult that even in death, I cannot involve God? If you're not used to involving God in your situations, you will not involve God in all your situations. You will choose the ones to involve God, you will choose the ones not to involve God. You will choose what to trust God in. You will choose what not to trust God in. Hezekiah prayed after he was told he's about to die. The Bible says in verse 2, Then he turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Immediately he got the report. He did not wait a second, but he turned his face. This is the problem that we have. When we are in situations, we take seconds or we take minutes to start thinking about that situation. That second that you have started to think about that situation, that is the point and time that you're starting to remove God out of your situation. Immediately you get a report. Immediately you are in a situation that is tight and you need help. Then and then. Turn your face to God. And the Bible continues to say in verse 11, and, and sorry, in yes, and the Bible continues to say, and Isaiah, and sorry, Hezekiah prayed, and verse 4 it says, and it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the middle of the court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, return and tell Hezekiah the leader of my people, Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayers. I have heard your prayers. I have not heard your thoughts. I have not heard your complaining. I have not heard your murmuring. But I have heard your prayers. And the Bible continues to say, I have seen your tears 
surely I will heal you. I want to ask you today, is there a situation that you have been praying to God and you want God to answer it? I want, you to, I want to ask you today and I want you when you're going back home to think about it. Have you been praying about that situation or have you been thinking about that situation? Those are two different things. Have you been praying about that situation or have you been thinking about that situation? And there's something so profound that I learned when I was joining Fibra Nation and Youth Aflame and I, read, I learned it sorry, from Reverend Brian. And he said, it's, it's, it's good that we pray. It is beautiful and it's wonderful that we pray. But imagine when we pray the word. Imagine when we pray the word. When you're going through a situation where you want God to provide for you, instead of just praying your own words, you are praying the word. You are speaking the word of God back to him. You are saying that, Lord, right now I do not want, I don't have school fees. But I know because you have said in your word that you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. Lord, provide for my school fees. I have seen in your word that you provided for Abraham, that you provided for Jacob, that you came through for so and so. Lord, today I stand as a child, as a heir to your kingdom. Lord, today provide for me. Today be my Jehovah Jireh. That is more powerful because you are speaking the word of God to him. That God has exalted his word. That God has exalted his word. That the word tells us that this word is living. This word is living. Meaning this word speaks. Meaning this word works. Meaning this word gives life. But for you to get to that place, you have to have a continuous fellowship with the word of God. We are getting back to basics. These days things are so complicated about God, about the gospel. Everything is so complicated. But we are getting back to basics. It's as simply as reading the word of God. It's as simple as being in fellowship in prayer with God. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 13, 32, sorry, 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. And 32 says, of the sons of Issachar, let me, let me start from verse 30 so that we can understand. Verse 30 says, of the sons of Ephraim, 20,800 mighty men of Vela, famous men throughout their father's house, of the tribe of Manasseh, 18,000 who were designated to come and make David king. Of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Their chiefs were 200 and all their brethren were at command. At this particular time, David was looking for men. He was still in Ziklag. So there were men who were going to David. And there were men from different tribes that were going to David to make him king. And out of all those men who were going in that whole scripture, verse 32, of the sons of Issachar were the only ones who were mentioned that they had an understanding of times of times to do what? To know what Israel ought to do. You will not understand the times if you have not been with God and if you are not with God. For you to understand the season and the time that you are in, you have to have been with God and are still with God. For you to understand what is happening in your life right now. For you to understand that you are enjoying what you prayed for five months ago. You have to have been with God and to be with God. And as you understand that right now you are in victory and breakthrough. For you to have an understanding like the sons of Issachar. You also understand that in the time as you are enjoying your breakthrough. You have to even pray more harder to protect that breakthrough. To ask God to protect that breakthrough and also involve God for your next level. For you to understand the times and seasons. Last Sunday, Rev. Joshua talked about times and seasons and also Bishop Karaoke. And it was so profound 
that we have to be timeless yet in time. We have to be timeless, yes, in time. Understanding the times you are in time, yet you are timeless. Because you're serving a God that is timeless. When you understand the times, you know the season that you're in. You know the season where you are from. And you know the season where you're going to. So you know where to intensify your prayers. You know where to intensify your praise. You know where to intensify your thanksgiving. You know where to intensify spiritual warfare. You know when it's time that right now in this season, I have to daily put on the whole armor of God because what is happening is not normal. You have an understanding of the times that you will not be left behind with what God is doing have you ever been in a place and people are talking about what is happening in the spiritual realm and you're like what like eh hey, you mean that is what is happening lord guys Kwani, where am i me i'm just seeing it around what those people have an understanding of the time and we'll not understand time as we know it. Like right now, it's four or three. You will not understand time like that. You understand time the way God understands time. Because you have been with God. And you are still with God. And understand me, young people, I know and I know. There are times when we get home or there are weeks that life is just hard. That person who asked Mark Zuckerberg to get a meme that says, "Where I understand there are those times. I understand there are times where you don't feel like praying. I understand there are times you do not even have a worship inside you. I understand there's a time that you do not even feel like fasting. But I believe we are all a body of Christ. In those times, there is someone you can call to and tell, stand with me in this time. I, I cannot pray. I cannot worship. I cannot do anything. I want you to stand with me. They are those people. Also, when you pick up the phone and call them, you are not big ignorant of what you are going through, but you are understanding that I might be going through this, but there's someone who is at a different level who can stand with me and pick me up and raise me up in the faith because they understand the times too. We have to get to have an understanding of the times. But this we have to have been with God and also be with God. There is something that one of my friends, again, she's called Hannah, she made me understand is that there are times when, when you make an appointment to meet with God, he makes an appointment with you and he shows up because you have showed up. God never shows up and you're not there. God shows up because you have showed up. And one ask me and two of my other friends, we were praying for something and right now we are enjoying it. And that was in the month of Feb. Feb and March. And I remember this because one of them prayed a very specific prayer. And I wrote it and I, we decided to have a prayer jar where we are writing the prayers we have made. And another one where we are having a jar that we are writing unanswered prayers. So there was a time I was just thinking and thanking God of what is going in my life right now. And God reminded me that what right now you're enjoying is what you prayed for in Feb, is what you prayed for in March. And in those two months, we were praying for one constant thing. We were praying for jobs. We were praying for jobs. And we made an appointment with God that we are meeting God every 4 a.m. Thursday. And every 4 a.m. Thursday when we show up, God shows up. God shows up because you have showed up. It's like a date. When you make a date with someone, your radio like it's 7, it's 7, we are meeting at that. But there are people who will still get laid off like 7.30, 8, 8.30, no problem. They still show up. But those ones who make it at 7, 
and you're saying it's seven, maybe to nine, because nine you all have your other things to do. You have a whole two hours to catch up, to enjoy, and all those things. And it's constant for the ones that have maybe girlfriend or they have dates um, every single week or something of a sort. It's engraved in your mind that every Tuesday we have to meet for this particular time. Or the ones usually have book clubs. Book clubs have a specific day every last Saturday of every month that we are meeting to discuss what we have read. So that means throughout the whole month you have to read the book, understand and make sure by the last Saturday of the month you're done with the book. You're making an appointment and you show up for that appointment. Why is it easy to make appointments and show up with physical people, but it's hard to make it with God. Imagine that you and God have some consistent time, consistent, constant, consistent times that you are meeting. The Lord, every day at 4 a.m., we are meeting. Lord, every day at 10 a.m., 10 p.m., sorry, Lord, we are meeting. Lord, every day, 1 p.m., we are meeting. Maybe we are meeting for 30 minutes or let's say we are meeting for 15 minutes. But Lord, we are meeting. We are meeting every other day. We are meeting. The Lord, I want a, to have a continuous, consistent fellowship with you. And even apart from prayer, I want to talk about testimony and testifying. And this is something also that God spoke to me very, very clearly. That yes, for example, like yes, we have been praying. For me personally, I've been praying for a job. And I have said it openly that I'm praying for a job. Publicly, I've said it. And then when God gives us what we have been praying for, we want God to be glorified in private. Why not glorify God in public? There's a meme that goes out and says, me, I cannot suffer in public and enjoy in private. I will suffer in public and I will enjoy in, private, in public. Like you will see me out there enjoying life in public. You say what you want to say, but I suffered in public, I will enjoy in public. Why not make it the same way with God? I want us to go to Luke 11 as we are finishing. I want us to go to the book of Luke. Sorry, 17 from verse 11. And it says, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood far afar off. And they lifted their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourself to the priests. And so it was that they, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice and glorified God. I want you to underline loud voice. Glo loud voice. Not whispers or like, what is, no, no, no. Loud voice and glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But, were, uh, but where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said unto him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. In other words, it says, arise, go your way. Your faith has sealed your victory. Arise, go your way. Your faith has sealed your breakthrough. Your testimony has sealed your victory. Your testimony has sealed your breakthrough. This leper, Jesus said, foreigner. Have you ever seen it so easy for people who are not saved to celebrate their wins in public? They will post about it. They will post about it. They will say, this is what is happening. And man say, I am grateful. Even if they will not say grateful to God, they will just say, I'm grateful. 
and maybe they will tag the people who made it happen and all those things, but they will show it in public. People who are not saved are very quick to celebrate their wins because they know what it has taken to get to that win. Them, they are there out there celebra- saying thankful to their friends or the team that they work with. But us, when we get a victory, we are so quick to hide it. We are so quick not to talk about it in front of people. I want to teach you today that when you testify, it's not all about you. It's about the person who is listening, that they may get the faith that God can be able to also do it for them. That the other person can see this person was going through the same thing I was going through. So God deliver them. So God can be able to deliver me. We usually have this voice in our minds that lies to us that, oh, when you talk about it, you're bragging. Oh, when you talk about it, you are showing off. Oh, when you talk about it, this and this is happening. But when you are talking about your problem in public, when you're telling people to pray for you, why didn't that voice tell you you're bragging about your problems? It's telling you you're bragging about your victory that God gave you. Why? The devil is a liar. And when the, the devil will hinder you from knowing the word of God, we have to get to a place and overcome not only by the blood of Jesus, but also by the word of our testimony. We have, as a believer, to come together. There was a time upstairs you were talking with Mitch and Mona, and we were talking about what has been happening and the good things that God has been doing in each of our lives. And it was such a joy to see that we have not been serving God in vain, that God has answered our prayers, that we are not in the same level, that it might tarry, but it has surely come to pass. That that even gave us more faith. That gave us even more zeal to continue serving. But imagine if we didn't talk about it. Imagine if it were only me telling my, my grandmother and my family that, oh, I have gotten a job and this has happened and I didn't share with people. We have to get to that place that, yes, we have gotten our victory, but we go back and give God glory, not in private, but in public. The Lord, you have been glory. I am, I'm giving you thanks. I have been giving you thanks. I have given a thanksgiving offering. But Lord, because I had asked people to pray for me this and this, because Lord, this is what I've been praying for. I want you to be glorified. The Lord, fill me up with a job that all they see and all that they talk about is how you, oh Lord, you are able to do it. The Lord, if you did it for Jane, you can do it also for me. Fill me up, oh God, with an education, with school fees. The Lord, all they see is you. Fill me up, oh God, with a new house, with a new place to live. The Lord, all they see is you. Fill me up, oh God, that you may be glorified through me, but not fill me up that I may be quiet about it. That's a lie from the devil. That's a lie from the devil. That's a lie. I want us this week and continue. I want to challenge us. You might not do it how I may do it. You might not do it how someone else may do it, but do it in your own way. But let God be glorified in our generation. Let God be glorified in our generation. Let our generation know that serving God is not in vain. Because that's where they mock us. They're like, you, you're in church Monday to Monday. You, after work, you're going to the services. See, after you have time to rest. See, after you just come with us, we are going for parties and all those things. You're telling them that, no, my God cannot allow. I Or you're there telling them that, Lord, no, me, I'm trying to keep myself pure. Because that's a command from God. They're like, I went in Shamba or something of the sort. No, 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 no. But because of the wins God has given you, let God be glorified. And let them who mocked you keep quiet. Because it's the hand of God. It's the hand of God. People out here will say thank you to my team. Thank you to this and this. 
But you can post and be a different and say, I have gotten A, B, C, D. And Lord, thank you. Because I prayed, I cried unto you, and you inclined your ear, and you heard me, and you answered me. You heard me, and you delivered me, oh God. We are getting back to basics. We are getting back to basics. That God be glorified. That even when we have, we are still praying for other things. Or maybe you're here or listening to us online and you're like, but I have not gotten what I have been praying for. Go back and tell God, thank you. Because when I prayed for A, you did. When I prayed for B, you did. Even this C, Lord, even before I see it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh God, because you're going to do it for me. And God is going to tell you, arise. Arise, your faith has given you your breakthrough. Your faith has given you that victory. Your thanksgiving has opened your door. Your thanksgiving has caused you to walk where you wanted to walk. Your thanksgiving has given you your heart's desires in the name of Jesus Christ. But because you gave God thanks, because you understood your times, and because you had a relationship, a continuous fellowship with the word of God, we are getting back to basics. We are getting back to basics. They may seem so basic, but that's our foundation. That's what we are based on. That's what our foundation is as Christians. And as young people trying to navigate this world, tend to make it worse as Kenyan youth trying to navigate the Kenyan system. We need God. Lord, we need God and we need more of him. Like yesterday, God, you showed up so well. But Lord, for today and tomorrow, I need you more. Because I know there is more that is found in you. Why would I settle for bronze and you tell me in Isaiah that instead of bronze, you will give me gold? Lord, no, that is not my portion. Why would I settle for wood? More that is found in you, Jesus. There is more that is found in you. But for you to know that there is more that is found in God, and for you to search and seek for what is more that is found in God, you have to continuously stay in God. You have to continuously pursue God in prayer and in the Word of God. And when it seems hard, because there are days, there are days that is hard, Paul himself. In prison, as he was writing his letters, he was telling the various churches to pray for him, that he may be able to be with them, that he, he told them to pray for him. Even you, when you're going through the hard times, God knows, God knows you're going through the hard time, but don't let the hard time overcome you, but let God's victory and God's goodness overcome your life. When you're going through those tough times that you cannot pray. I have been in one of those times. I have been in a place where I am so low, I can't do it. I got my friends and I told them, pray for me. And they stood with me until I was able. There are times where you can't and your faith is weak. There are times where you cannot be able to continue. And those times, be real with God and tell God, I personally can't. I, I can't. I can't be able. Get someone to pray with you and be real with God. There's one thing that I like about the psalmist. And as I was reading the book of Psalms, there is nobody who was as real as David with God. David got to a place and told God, me, I want to take my bed and go and make it in hell. That's how much life has gotten tough. Lord, he told God, I want to take my bed, go make it in hell, because it's tough. It's getting tough out here. He did not sugarcoat what he was going through. He was real with God. He told God, I am at a place where I can't even pray. I'm at a place I do not even have the strength. And after he was done making that prayer or telling God or communicating with God as the verses ended, 
David always or the psalmist always ended with glorifying God. Because when you run to God in your weakness, he becomes your strength. The Lord, in my weakness, you are my strength. The Lord, in my low moments, you are my strength. You have to say that to God. When you just think it, you're just thinking. But when you involve God in your weakness, he becomes your strength. When you involve God in the moments where you're lost, where you can't fight anymore, he becomes your strong tower. He becomes your refuge. He becomes your peace. But you have to involve God. You have to involve God. That's why I started by saying, Lord, who are we that you are mindful of us? That Jesus, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. But Lord, by your mercies and by your grace, you are mindful of us and that you hear us when we call, Lord. You hear me when I call. Even the times that it seems that, Lord, you are not near or you're not listening to me. When I call, you hear me. The tears that I cry in my prayers, Lord, you have seen them. The Lord, who am I that you love me? That over and over and over again, God, your love surrounds me. The Lord, even when I sin against you, Lord, you still love me. You still open your arms wide open and you tell me you can still come back. There is still space for you in the kingdom. It's not full. Like you are going to a place, a, a building or a company, you're told, I'm sorry, we are not taking any more employees. In God's kingdom, you will not tell you, I'm sorry, we are not taking any more saved people. It's always open. The Lord, who are we? Who are we? The Lord, you are mindful of us. That you call us friends. That you allow us to approach you directly. Not through a priest. Not through someone will go and tell, I have sinned, Father, forgive me, I've come for confession. No. The Lord, I'm coming direct to you. I, I, as a child of God, I'm coming direct to you to speak to you. As a friend would speak to a friend. Lord, who are we that you are mindful of us? Who are we that you are mindful of us? I want us right now for just one minute to go just before God and tell God, thank you. The Lord, you chose us for a moment like this. Thank you, the Lord, you are mindful of us. Thank you, Lord, that you are thinking about us. You are thinking about our future. You're thinking about our present in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, oh God, that you call us friend. The Lord, you have called us your children. That you have, be you have given us power to become sons. You have given us power to become daughters. Thank you, King of glory, that you sent your only son to die for us on the cross. Thank you, my God, that even the prayer that I have made, I may not have seen them, Jehovah God, but Lord, my Father and my King, I know that you are going to, to give them unto me, my Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Abba, Father, I give you praise and I give you all the honor. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, my God, for your grace. Thank you for your mercies, my God, where I might have taken them for granted, oh God I pray today that Father forgive me, where I had taken your grace for granted forgive me today, where I have, have I have had pride my God, that I have not come to you, Abba Father, forgive me Jehovah God, where I have thought that with my own abilities I am able to conquer. I am able to do ABCD. Father, forgive me where I have negated your hand in my life. Father, forgive me. Today I come before you, my God, uh, and
and I just want to acknowledge my Father that Lord where I have come my God and where I am right now it's because of your hand it's because of your mercies it's because of your love in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ King of glory I give you praise King of glory I give you all the glory and King of glory I adore your name thank you Jesus Thank you, my God. Thank you, my Father. I'd like to call Patricia. As we are winding up, we are winding up. I'd like to call Patricia. I'd like to call Patricia. She has something to share with us. She has something to share with us in the name of Jesus. I want to challenge us again this week. I want to challenge us again this week. However you are going to do it, Seal your victory and your breakthrough with your testimony. Seal your victory and your breakthrough with your testimony. Testify of the goodness of God. It's not bragging. That's the voice from the devil and that's a lie. It's not bragging. You may not be where you want to be, but for this season, this is the place where God has brought you before he takes you to the next level. Seal it with a testimony. This breakthrough that you have right now that maybe to you is small, you're thinking, why should I testify about it? There is someone who is crying to get that place where you're at. There is someone who is crying to get to that place where you're at. And the place that you're at and you know that you want more, don't get comfortable. Intensify your prayers for your next level intensify your fellowship with God for the next level in the name of Jesus.